All right, everybody, we are back with another wellness and weight loss or gain Wednesday. Excited to go through today's topic, which is going to be the protein leverage hypothesis. I'll explain exactly what that means, why one could be dramatic for improving your satiety, meaning how satiated you are during the day, as well as your body transformation goals, and then how that might be explained as to why the blue zones might be getting very different results than necessarily the body transformation that you may be looking for. So I'm gonna take you through this. It's actually a pretty simple, pretty straightforward study, and I'm happy to share with you any of that additional research. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2854 for all the details. I'm calling this the thrive versus survive you know, protein debate. And I always like to be able to give you an unbiased opinion on this. So I'm going to share with you both perspectives. All right. So let's go over what the protein leverage hypothesis is. So it goes through this. It basically says protein influences and controls your appetite and your satiety. What that means is that your body is always going to be hungry until it gets enough protein. And that's an interesting hypothesis. Now, I would say that there's actually a lot of truth behind that. I've been in the body transformation, fitness and health-based space since about 96, 1996 or so. And what I always found that in order for me to help my body transformation clients, especially when I was walk, working back in the day from like 96 to 2010 in personal training, strength and conditioning, body transformation, nutrition, et cetera, is that the easiest way for me to help them transform their body, which is basically lose weight, you know, I add muscle tone. I'm doing that in air quotes. Um, but you know, we, we need to, we need to speak the language of a clients, of course. And I think that that's very important as practitioners. So what I want to share with you is this though, the easiest way always to do that, it's not sustainable forever is to do lean protein. Okay. Now you could say fatty cuts. We're not talking about that. We're talking about lean based protein, your veggies and your healthy fats, like your olive oil, your avocados, et cetera. Okay. So when we did that, we would get dramatic transformation, but we knew from working with hundreds of thousands of people that there was diminishing returns after a certain period of time. I'm not going to go over that here today, but I will share with you this. Not only has it always worked, it still works to this day. Is that the best choice? Well, I'm going to share that in just a moment. The other part is this. I did a podcast. I'm going to, I'm going to link it up for you here today at stephencabral.com slash 2854 is if you are hungry a half hour after a meal, it means one of two things. And I go in depth on the podcast. So I'm not going to go in depth today. I just want to share it with you. It means you didn't need enough fiber. So you didn't get enough fiber or you didn't get enough protein. That is almost always what I found it to be in my practice. Now, there could be other reasons. In Ayurveda, they talk about the five different tastes, et cetera. In my experience and in my practice, again, working with hundreds of thousands of people, I found it to be not enough protein or not enough fiber. Both of those are solved by the previous nutrition plan we just spoke about. But now let's get into the let's get into the podcast now. Let's get into the protein leverage hypothesis. It means that your body survival wise prioritizes protein. And it does. And that's because most protein contains some fat, okay? So now you already get two of your three macros. And let's say you were out of carbohydrates, like you just couldn't get carbs. Well, protein can be converted to a carbohydrate, literally, glucose. And so now a protein-based food in and of itself could settle all three macronutrients. And even in Ayurveda, they talk about satisfying the five tastes. And again, I'm not necessarily going to go too deep on that. But what I've always tried to share with people is that if we don't get enough of the fiber and we don't get enough of the protein, we leave ourselves and our body knows at a little bit of a deficit. So one of the interesting things is if you look at protein as one of the three macros, right? So you have protein, you've got fat, and you've got carbs. Those are your three macros. Well, eating protein in and of itself can really satisfy all three macros. And you may not have really heard that before because it doesn't make sense on the surface. But most proteins, just think of a steak, it has plenty of fat, right? Eggs has plenty of fat. So when you look at a fish, plenty of fat. So, okay, so you're eating a protein source, predominantly protein, but there is some fat. It's satisfying based protein, it's satisfying based both protein and fat, but it's also satisfying carbohydrates, not in the predominant and healthy way, but it can. If you have no carbs in your diet, eating a high protein diet is not keto because you, you actually convert 
quite a number of those amino acids, or you can, in order to become glucose, so just through gluconeogenesis. So your body can convert, believe it or not, proteins to carbs or in a roundabout kind of way, at least glucose. So protein can be preferential to the body because if it gets that, it's able to satisfy a lot of these requirements. That doesn't mean that it's going to help overall for overall health, but it can satisfy its basic needs. So now let me share with you the study. It's not a huge study, but they put two groups of people on two different meal plans. One, 10% of their diet was protein. It was 66 grams per day. Another group got 25% of their diet from protein. It was 138 grams per day. The participants were told they could eat as much or as little food as they wanted, and snacks were available all day. The foods was weighed, everything was measured, and they knew exactly how many calories the individuals ate. What they found was that the 10% low protein group consumed about 260 calories more than the higher protein group. This is interesting, right? So 260 calories more. Now, what they didn't go into was, did they gain more weight? Did they not gain more weight? Did they get the same body transformation? But they did eat more. So there was a little bit more of a craving. And I find this to be interesting as well because there's two things that also happen with protein. The one that I talked about before could, could satisfy all three macros, but protein is also the most difficult to break down, typically for the body. It has a higher thermogenic effect, which means it keeps you fuller longer. And that is why I'm not a low protein person, but I'm not a high protein person, and I want to share with you just in a moment why. But you do need enough protein at each meal in order to be satisfied in order to feel full enough that you're not ready to eat again in another couple hours. Because my goal for each individual is to eat, let the blood sugar come back down, eat again, let the blood sugar come back down, eat one more time. Adults seem to do really well on three meals per day. Now, you could do two meals. It's just more difficult to get in all of your micronutrients and your seven to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day, which help with three, five major causes of mortality, heart disease, blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's. So something to think about. Now, why did I call this podcast, though, Thrive versus Survive? Okay, so we, if you're looking at, okay, this individual is in amazing shape. They've got good muscle tone. They've got all, you know, like all those different buzzwords. They're most likely eating somewhere around a gram or so per pound of lean body weight. They're, that's most likely what they're having, right? Because it's better for body transformation. I'm not disputing that. That's literally the world that I lived in and still do live in for, for decades. However, what we don't really ever see, there's always outliers. We don't see any centennial-based populations, centurion-based populations, 100-plus-year-olds that are on a high-protein diet. Now, it doesn't mean they're on a low-protein diet, but they are around 10% to maybe 15% of their diet, no more than 19% of their diet from protein. Now, it's still a pretty good amount per day. Like in this study, 66 to maybe 80 grams per day would put them there. Now, what's the difference? Well, they don't have the big muscles. They're not in this amazing shape, but they live longer. And that's why I simply share with you, at some point you decide, what am I trying to optimize for? Am I optimizing for body transformation or am I optimizing for longevity? For me, what I've decided is that I want to try to optimize for both. So I, I kind of I lay in between those, right around the 20%, 18% or so from protein, but not more but not less, still do the strength training three times a week, still get my cardio in, try to maintain a healthy body fat percentage, healthy BMI, all of those different things. And I know the BMI is not the end all be all, but trying to hit all of the different high performance health based parameters. So in the end, the choice is yours, but I did wanna state this study for you because I do believe that if you're not feeling satiated, and you're feeling like you're dragging a little bit during the day and you always have these higher uh, cravings, I would look at the amount of protein that you're eating because some people are under eating protein. And the easiest way to think about this is you, from most, from most of the women in my practice, we eat 20 to 30 grams of protein, three meals per day. It's usually 20 grams in the morning, it's 30 grams at lunch, 30 grams at dinner. 
Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, of course, it depends on your weight, and it's not the same for everyone. And it could be male or female. It honestly doesn't matter. But if you have more muscle, you're going to eat a little bit more protein. And for most of the men in my practice, we're just looking at around 30 to 40 grams of protein for three meals per day. Some of them a little bit lower because we're trying to optimize more for cardiovascular and a lot of other, other issues that they may be dealing with, but we can simply do 30 grams at breakfast, 30 grams or 20, 25 to 30 grams of breakfast, 25 to 30 grams um, at lunch, and then we may actually do a little bit more for a meal in the evening, 40, 45 grams or so, and we can still get to 100, 115 or so grams per day. So the goal uh, for me with all of these shows is not to tell you exactly what to do. It's more how to do it why to do it, and then let you decide. So if you are optimizing for satiety, feeling full, reducing your cravings, improving body transformation, you're going to want to eat a little bit more protein. I don't deny that, and I actually recommend it. And if you're optimizing for longevity, don't go too low that you become too emaciated and not strong enough and you lose your muscle tone, but do go low enough because simply um, what we've seen from the research, staying between the 10% to 19%, at least for what we've seen, not even anecdotally, but research-wise, all around the world, no matter where you are, the longest-lived population seems to be within that threshold. The last caveat is this. Over the age of 65 years old, you actually need to increase your protein a bit. And the reason is you become far more catabolic. You'll learn more about this on a show I just did on episode 2847. We'll link it up here today as well. Just head on over to stephencabal.com slash 2854 for all of today's links, and you'll be able to find that as well. So over age 65, we increase our protein a little bit because you become a little bit more catabolic more sarcopenia, bone breakdown, muscle tissue breakdown. But between those ages of you know 35 and 65, we're just watching our protein overall for overall health. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Much appreciated. Take care. Share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.